Hey guys, welcome to Moose's Machinery. Uh, today's video is going to be all about just a few tips on the milling machine. Uh, five, in fact. I think five is a good round number. But, you know, our first and arguably most important tip of the day is that lube is very important. Uh, <laughs> in more than one aspect of life, but particularly with machine tools, proper lubrication really does extend their service life. And... I personally am a tight wad. I use no name brand whey oil and I use a lot of it. I will lube this machine regardless of how long it sit, how much oil is on the ways. I will in just lube it up, go to town. Um, this also applies to a lot of milling you can do dry, uh, especially with carbide. With manual machine horsepower, you really don't need to worry about killing them. They basically last forever. Um, I break carbide end mills before I wear them out. I can't recall actually dulling one in recent memory. <laughs> I snapped them all. But, you know, for drilling, reaming, you never ream a hole dry. Uh, you always, before you stick it in, coat the reamer, coat the hole, follow your speeds and feeds recommendations. Speeds and feeds deserve their own video. Uh, they deserve a lot of their own videos. But, you know, one of our next tips is checking your gibs. So we did talk about lubrication of sliding surfaces. Now, gibs are uh, tapered wedges that basically control the slack, for lack of a better way to put it. You need clearances for things to move, and you need clearance for oil. Now, I lubricate the machine and then adjust my gibs. I don't just adjust my gibs dry because you want room for that oil film. You know, you'll see it a lot. If you, you have a really crazy bad surface finish, but only in one access, uh, check your gibs. And I'm going to fire up a DRO real quick and demonstrate that even with reasonably adjusted gibs, you're going to get movement in the table. So we'll just transfer over the DRO and then we'll come back for our next tip. Okay, so you can read it. Um, we're going to look in the Y. So watch the Y. I just locked the gib. I unlocked the gib. Locked the gib. Unlocked the gib. So locking and unlocking, depending on your axes, you know, my X axes, some of the time I don't get any movement. Um, let's just dial in. All right, so screw it. We're not going to have exactly zero. But yeah, I can usually count on about two tenths of movement, sometimes four, of locking and unlocking my gibs. That's a factor in your precision. And you know, when your, your gib adjustment isn't where it needs to be, you can move a full thousandth of an inch. Um, on my knee, I move about one half to three quarters of a thousandth of an inch when I lock and unlock the knee. I've played with it, so I either have the knee too tight, it doesn't move, or it move um, when I crank it. So it's a trade-off. You, you kind of learn that with your machine. And, you know, we get into compensating. Like, we're getting kind of into a deeper level than just a here's five tips. But be aware of your gib adjustment. Be aware that they're going to move around. Now, our next video is cleanliness is next to godliness. I, I like to keep my vice really clean. And I will clean it out when I take parts in and out of the vise. I will take the parallels out. I will wipe the parallels down. Keep the machine as clean as reasonably possible. It's also the reason I have these neoprene covers on my ways because I don't really have any dirt on my way now. That creaking noise is the covers because it's fairly cold in the shop right now. But I'm gonna take the camera and show you. Those ways are in great shape right there, guys. Uh, this is a 70-year-old machine. This has been lubricated and kept clean. That's very important. Now, next, and this is just more personal opinion, but make a plan on what you're going to do. Uh, there's a really nice flat spot on the vise. You can hose it down with some brake clean and write what you want to do on there in a Sharpie. Uh, if that's what it works for you, I keep notepads all over the place. So make a plan for what you're going to do. Think deeply about your order of operations and don't just start doing something to do something. 
Um, you know, think about it. Because there's a lot of things you'll do if you don't do them in the right order. You've made your life significantly harder than it needs to be. And also, find your center. So finding your center, this is our last tip. In this context, really does refer to find the center of the part. Um, but also, find the edge of the part. So I'm just going to grab a few different edge finders and center finders for you. and just, dem just We're not going to demonstrate, but... I'll give you a talk. So this is a pretty conventional style of eccentric edge finder. I think this is one of the more popular ones right now. This um, half inch, they're good. They work well. I, I like them. They're accurate. Uh, this one, the Starrett number 828 Wiggler. You can get a ball on it. These use a 3 8 shank. And you can get a point on it. So this one's a really good center finder. These are edge and center finders. And now this, I don't remember who makes it, but I bought it from McMaster Car. This is really nice for finding the center of a rod quickly. You know, you just go until it lines up. You know, and it's not perfectly precise guys, but it's quick. And I see guys on YouTube using the scale trick all the time. I don't really like the scale trick to find center. I think one, it's hard on your scales and two, it's really not that much more accurate um, than frankly, turning the machine on, running the, the spindle down while moving back and forth. And if you're gentle on it, you can get yourself within five or 10 thousandths of center pretty easily and quickly. Um, that last tool, this tool I showed you um, is a really good compromise between speed and accuracy, uh, especially for, it actually will work on square parts if they fit in between, um, just because, uh, you know, you only ever contact on two points. So for square parts, you can still use this as long as it fits in here, even for round parts. Like you think this is for round parts, but you can use it for square parts too. Um, it'll actually center you roughly it wouldn't get it wouldn't help on this part because it uh, hits the vise before it hits the part but you know as long as you're clear of the vise for it it'll work and you don't have to use everything like you don't have to use an edge finder you can use an end mill to find the edge of a part it's less accurate but it's quick and sometimes all you need is speed so you know, make your plan, find your center. I like to have my plan because it tells me is speed more important or is accuracy more important? So, you know, it just have some fun with it too. That, that That's kind of a given um, from my last tips and tricks video is just have fun. If you're not doing this for a living, make the process enjoyable. Make the process your goal, not your production, not your product. Because if you make the product the goal and you fail and you break stuff on the way there, you're going to get really discouraged and frustrated. But if you are getting making the process your goal, it doesn't matter if you get anything done. You're out there to have fun and you had fun. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed and hopefully you guys get out to your shop and go have some fun.